let's try to write the sx and the sigma x as an expert using the experimental data. We have written SZ assuming the up state is an eigen state of SZ and down state is an eigen state of SZ with the eigen values as plus half h cross for the up state and minus half h cross for the down state. Okay. In the same eigen state of SZ, we would like to write the SX operator and SY operator. And we know that those operators should be such that it should be traceless. We try to find the eigenvalues since it splits into two beams. The eigenvalues of those states should be again plus half h cross or minus half h cross. All these data we know. But we still have to find what is sx. How can you go about it? One is to use this property and try to figure out what is the 2 by 2 matrix which will satisfy this and you can figure it out. Other one is to use logics using the stern gerlach apparatus and try and figure out what is sx and sy. With these stringent conditions, they have to be traceless, eigenvalues have to be of the sigma x and sigma y have to be plus or minus 1. Okay, you can use various methods and try and figure this out. Folks, So, what is the operator form for SZ for spin halves is the question. Let's look at only the valence electrons that we get two states with eigenvalues SZ equal to plus half H cross and SZ equal to minus half H cross. We denote symbolically as an up spin for the eigenstate of SZ with eigenvalue plus half H cross. And similarly, down to denote eigenstate with eigenvalue minus half h cross. SZ operator in the, over, in the above basis, you can write up state and down state, the corresponding dual vector as a row matrix, row vector, and you can work it out. Will SX also be diagonal in the same representation? No. That we know because they don't, they are incompatible observables. Go back to the Stern Gerlach sequence of measurements which we did, and what do we say? That the SX eigenvalue as plus half, I'm suppressing the H cross now, let's not worry about it, you can put it back later. SX equal to plus half H cross after you make it go through the SGX, the state with plus half will be a superposition in general will be a superposition of the two basis states. Okay. Experimentally we saw that it was equal intensity. So we are going to put the magnitude as 1 over root 2 and 1 over root 2. We want to normalize the states. There could be a theoretical phase factor here, which will not be experimentally detected, but you can in principle have a relative phase factor. Overall phase factor is useless, but you could have a relative phase factor. This is the most general state, one of the eigenstates of the SX operator can be written. The other eigenstate should be orthogonal to this state. The SX equal to minus half will again have equal intensity, but the coefficient should be such that those two states are orthogonal and also that state per se should also be normalized. But I could have put an up spin here and a down spin here just to make notation simpler, but you know both the notations. Okay. Similarly, the other eigenstate, as I said, I put a negative sign here so that they will be orthogonal and use the eigenvalue equation for the SX operator. What is the eigenvalue equation for the SX operator? Same, similar to what you had for the SZ states, but now it should be eigenstates of SX operator. But these eigenstates are not eigenstates of SZ operator. 
That's why we wrote them to be a superposition of S Z. Use this and using this data, I want you to fix what is the matrix form or the operator form for S X. I'll leave it to you as an exercise. Do it and check it out. The four elements in the two by two matrix. Please try to work it out the way I did it for the sigma z using the equations and the previous data. These two data you use and using these two equations, try to figure it out. What should be the matrix representation or the operator representation for the apex object? It is off diagonal matrix. Please verify. After you have done that work, you can verify whether I get this with these appropriate phase values. Okay, so this is an outer product of the up, up, down, and similarly down up. How will you write the matrix for this? S X is up down with e to the power of minus i delta h cross by two, and then you have a plus h cross by two e to the power of plus i delta down up. So what will this be in matrix form? H cross by two. I'll take it out. Diagonal is zero, right? Of diagonal is the other way around or this way? So again, traceless. What about the square of these matrices? One or Eigen value is eigen value is plus or minus one for this matrix. Check it. Call that matrix as sigma x. Find what this is. Find eigen value of sigma x. Okay. So as of now, I have not fixed what is delta, as he was asking. We could have chosen delta equal to zero, but we will do it systematically. I want you to verify this. This, this I have not worked it out, but please do it yourself and check it. Okay. So similarly, instead of putting it through S G X, you put it through S G Y. Instead of S G X, if you had put it through S G Y, then an arbitrary eigenstate. The same argument. There will be two eigenstates for S Y operators. And you can write the states of S Y operator again as a superposition of S Z eigenstates with a different phase factor. Let me call it as delta prime. Okay, so I can do that. Write it as one over root two times S Z equal to plus half x cross. Plus e to the power of i delta prime by root two, as is that equal to minus half x cross. I can do this. The way I wrote it for the S X states in terms of the eigenstates of S Z, I can also write S Y states in terms of the eigenstates of S Z. And do the same things the way we did and fix what is the S Y operator. Again, it will be up up. Up, up or up down with some coefficient, with another coefficient, down up. Okay. What are those coefficients? Fix it by using the same arguments. If I had an S Y operator on S Y equal to plus half X cross. It has to be plus half x cross on s y equal to plus half x cross, and plus half x cross state is this. 
to rewrite it and try to find the matrix element in the basis stage of S. We all understand, right? Will you do it? Again, you will find a matrix for this. It's very similar to what you did for your S. But only delta will replace it by delta prime. So now to determine the faces delta and delta prime, we can also do the superposition, the sun gerlach first along x and then along y. Again, you will have equal intensity. So, the superposition of an Sx state, there will be equal components of Sx equal to plus half and minus half in a specific Sy state or vice versa. So, that means the probability should be equal. Use this fact and try and fix what is delta and delta prime choices. Show that the norm or the, if not norm, the inner product of two states will be this and the mod of that should be 1 over root 2. And similarly, the inner product with the Sy equal to minus half and Sx equal to plus half is this. And now you fix your choice. What is the possibility which will fix this choice? Delta minus delta prime has to be pi by 2. Is that correct? So that's it. Once I get delta minus delta prime to be pi by 2, I can now make a choice. Let's take the Sx eigenstate to have no phase factor put delta to be 0, then because of this property, I have to make the relative phase for the Sy operator to have delta prime to be pi by 2, there is no option. Yeah, plus 1 minus pi by i pi by 2 does not really matter. So, with this, if you try to write the matrix operator, for Sx and Sy. So, there is no phase factor here, but here you will have a minus i and plus i. Okay. But this as you are pointing it out, it could have been a plus i and a minus i also. It does not violate any of these properties. But the only thing is you have to make sure that your Sx, Sy commutator is SSS and then one of the signs will be conveniently given. Okay. So, write the matrix form for the Sx and Sy and figure out what is sigma x and sigma y. Can you write it down? Matrix form for the Sx operator, if you try to write, this will be half h cross sigma x. Note that each of them is Hermitian. This I blindly if you write I and I, it won't be Hermitian. Sigma y. They are traceless. Eigenvalues are plus or minus 1. And they have the properties that sigma x squared is identity. Sigma y squared is identity. You can also check what is sigma x, sigma y. What is sigma x, sigma y? I times sigma z. Very good. So, you get this minus i and uh, if I do that, that is 0, then i, so 0 with an i and that you can write it as i you can take it out, minus i you can take it out and 1, 
So there is a slight notation here. If I put this to be minus i and plus i as sigma y, and then you get i times sigma i. So this is one unique convention which is taking care of this and it will take care of your algebra sx sy commutator should be ih cross s z. Okay. So zero minus i i zero is what we'll call it as a sigma y. So the sigma x sigma y sigma z in any textbook if you start seeing they are called the poly matrices sigma x sigma y sigma z are called poly matrices okay what are the properties sigma x squared sigma y squared sigma z squared is identity trace of sigma x trace of sigma y trace of sigma z is zero sigma i sigma j is i times sigma k with an epsilon i j k sorry epsilon i j k i times sigma k is there an i or it's not there it's there right This is a compact way of writing what I wrote for sigma x, sigma y is i times sigma z. You can write sigma i, sigma j as epsilon i j k i times sigma k. Can I write further? If i and j are equal, sigma i, sigma j is delta i j times identity. If i and j are equal, and if i and j are not equal, which is epsilon i j k, i times sigma k. Okay. So you can do various other things with these poly matrices. If I give e to the i a sigma dot a vector. What is this? It is e to the i sigma x a x plus sigma y a y plus sigma z a z. We did this e to the power of i sigma z times some theta. What did we get here? Cos theta plus i sigma z. Sin theta. You can argue that theta is the magnitude which is oriented along the z direction to start with. And what do you expect from there? Some theta vector if I had, I would have written this as cos of mod theta plus i sigma dot n hat sine of mod theta where theta vector is just by inspection. You can also verify here using poly matrices properties use the poly matrices properties and try and work it out what is e to the power of i sigma dot a it should be cos mod a plus i times sigma dot unit vector of mod a only the direction sigma dot or sigma cos sigma dot right please verify some of these things i will put it in the assignment also but please verify that the polymatrices are very rich. 
and it helps you to do many of these things. But why am I doing this explanation? What is the reason? How did you write the translation operator? When I wrote the translation operator, which shifts by a vector unit, it had an exponential of i and then you had an operator which I said this operator is a linear momentum operator and how much steps you want to translate that is what you get is what you had. I also at some point tried to motivate you to look at for very small rotation angle what should be the rotation operator. What was, what did we do for the rotation operator for a theta? If delta theta was very small, it was 1, some minus i theta or plus i theta. And let's do it along z direction, I said. Then what did we have? L is it? By h cross. I asked you to look at how the R vector changes under infinitesimal rotation and fix what should be the rotation operator and you write this. This is for infinitesimal. You can keep continuing. If you keep rotating about the same axis, you can keep continuing exactly like the way we wrote here. What will that be? Exponential of I Lz theta z by h cross will be for R of theta of z. This is rotation in your physical position space. This is rotation in your physical position space. But I have tried to tell you in the position space you have orbital angular momentum. An experimental stern gerlach experiment tells you that you should also have spin angular momentum. You can also have a rotation in the internal spin space. Okay? So that will be denoted by e to the power of i. Let's do s z rotation by theta z by h cross and what is s z? Sigma z half h cross sigma z right that is a by 2 theta z. So this is an operator which will perform rotation in the internal space by an angle theta z. And the by 2 comes because of the explicit representation of the spin operator. The eigenvalues are half, plus or minus half h cross. That's why this comes. So if I want to write what this is, I have to write this as cos of theta z by 2 plus i sigma z sine of theta z by 2. Because of this two factors. So all these polymatrices shows up in rotation in the internal space and you have to be familiar with it. What is the nature of these operators? Are they unitary? These, these operators are unitary. You can also say that R is, they are real entries, then you can call them to be orthogonal. So these are in general unitary operators. What is the dimension of these matrices? You can write a matrix representation. This is a 2 cross 2 matrix, right? This is a 2 cross 2. The e to the by 2. So you can write this as cos theta by 2 plus i 
sin theta z by 2. Sigma z is 1 and minus 1, right? 0, 0, cos theta z by 2, minus i sigma z, sigma z is minus 1 times sin theta z by 2. So what will this matrix be? e to the i theta z by 2, 0, 0, fine, no, that's it. So there are a lot of manipulation you can do with poly matrices and uh, the core thing is that these are unitary operators which perform your rotation in the internal space and they are 2 by 2 matrices.